Hello and welcome back to what I'm assuming is the last part of, Final, of Planet Stronghold. Samuel would eventually retire from the military, feeling he was able to do more good outside of it. However, he would remain on Stronghold, devoting his life to the animals and the people when coming up with ways which allowed the two to coexist. The only question which Samuel could never answer is why he kept winning hottest biologist competitions, even when he was well into his 70s. Samuel would eventually even have a nature preserve named after him, in honour of his efforts to preserve the wildlife of Stronghold. But although one of Samuel's regrets would be that he could never prove the existence of the Loch Ness Monster to the scientific world at large, even as he caught glimpses of it during his trips back to Earth. Despite great internal pressure, the numerous and numerous external threats, Kristoff managed to remain the undisputed crime lord on Stronghold, or at least those areas where humanity held sway. Eventually, Kristoff had so much power, he proved virtually impossible to arrest or convict. Not that Kristoff was heavy-handed with his power, as he believed in a light touch, and many luxuries made their way to the colony because of his desire for the finer things in life. Kristoff did find his actions curtailed by the presence of Captain Diana Nelson, and thus had to be more subtle in his methods, which served him in good stead when military investigators came much later. Much to his surprise, Kristoff's choice of honeysuckle cologne became a fashion trend among the seedier elements of Stronghold society. And if the authorities thought crime would end with his passing, Kristoff would prove this false, as he always had plenty of time to spend with the younger generation and to teach them from the wealth of his knowledge. However, he would consider Alicia a bit of a disappointment, since she would take his criminal expertise and then use it in the service of the authorities. The single act which ensured Kristoff's fame was when he managed to get the band Oblivion and Carnadine to perform for the whole colony. While there were allegations they were coerced into doing so, the band was more than eager to perform for some of their biggest fans. Galenia's actions on Stronghold catapulted her to the highest ranks of the Imperial Intelligence Agency. She was often called upon to capture the greatest threats and dangers the Empire faced, but needed brought in alive. Her prowess became so renowned that many criminals, upon hearing that Galenia was being assigned to their cases, voluntarily turned themselves in. However, she didn't allow her skills to atrophy, as she taught the colonists on Stronghold to defend themselves from alien threats. Galenia didn't limit herself to hunting fugitives and outlaws. She became one of the Empire's best game huntresses, and considered a hunter failure if her prey died in the process. Also, some of the greatest trophies were still earned while hunting with Captain Diana Nelson, such as the half-mile long boar group still on display back on Earth. Galenia also did her utmost to make sure those who were lost on Stronghold were never forgotten, soldier and civilian alike. And much to her own surprise, Galenia found she started a new trend among the soldiers. Individuals would refuse cosmetic surgery, wearing their scars as badges of honour. Mario continued to serve with honour, so it was much to everyone's shock when he announced his retirement. There were many officers and a few bribes, and even a couple of threats to keep him enlisted, but he stood firm. Mario returned to Italy, and opened a restaurant to great acclaim. Those individuals who came in uniform always found an open seat available for them. Many people were surprised to find a place of honour set aside for a maternal-looking woman in Mario's restaurant. When pressed, he would simply say it was the Nelson which impressed him most. Not Alexander, nor Diana, but their grandmother. Much of Mario's success could, attributed, could be attributed to his successful fusion of alien and human cuisine, creating a delectable fusion which became world famous. What Mario considered his greatest accomplishment was the sculpture of Captain Diana Nelson in the nude. Greatly admired on Stronghold, later generations would debate whether the captain truly had those anatomical dimensions, or if they had been exaggerated. Many times, Mitsuki considered retiring and resuming her own life, and decided against it. After all, her military connections gave her access to the newest computer tech, and by this point she automated most of her work. With her copious free time, she fought to promote robot rights, but ultimately, human society as a whole rejected this. It wasn't all fun and games for Mitsuki, since she still wanted revenge on the Yakuza, and Mitsuki still made sure to find time for her gaming, and even was instrumental in improving many game features, such as improving the romance mechanics for the, for the centaur mermaid relations in Age of Avaron. Even long after her death, there were many who said Mitsuki's presence was still around, this time existing in the lines of code on Stronghold. Xavier spent a few more years in the military, but he eventually had to resign, and assumed the title of Duke of Brazil. His subjects grew to love him, as Xavier gave up some of his power, allowing his subjects to govern themselves. Of course, this was done to grant Xavier more time to pursue his hobbies, and spend less time dealing with the minutiae of government. 
This isn't to say Xavier didn't leave his mark. For example, he was the first Duke to require morning bungee jumps before attending to affairs of state, and no one could deny that his carnival celebrations were legendary. Many nobles felt uneasy in Xavier's presence, and it wasn't that he didn't int indulge in his own pleasures, since the nobles did that as a matter of habit. Rather, they couldn't understand a man who was so quick to hand over so much of his personal power to those below him. And as a result, Xavier's personal guard worked overtime protecting him from assassins who were there to punish Xavier for allowing commoners to think above their station. Mira continued her scientific studies on Stronghold, and though she had to struggle to keep an open mind about the other aliens, especially where the Madrids were concerned, she left her mark on history in many ways. Whether it was the creation of autonomous robots, making psionics available to everyone. However, Miro also learned to have some fun, such as when she starred in the movie The Giantess Crush Chicago. Mira, taking after her own parents, continued her treatment of injured animals, establishing a hospital to continue this work. And though Gruselli is credited for making psionics accessible to everyone, Mira's research was also essential to the project. Despite Queen Regina's misgivings, Rigel remained on Stronghold for as long as he could. It didn't take long for people to grow accustomed to the fact that the heir apparent of the Empire also worked on their cars, although one accompanied by bodyguards. Eventually, the Queen would step down and Rigel would ascend to the throne, and in doing so, he established a royal residence on Stronghold, leaving the governance of Earth to administrators chosen for their loyalty and confidence. One tradition Rigel didn't enforce with his offspring was the requirement that they work as one of the lower classes would. Not that he minded if they wished to pursue such a career, but he didn't wish to follow his mother in this regard. Unfortunately, this decision might have changed the course of a latter descendant by the name of Oscar Newell. Lucius spent a good portion of his time trying to gain acceptance and freedom, but this ultimately did little good. When the Empire released the full details on the Discorian affair, human society not only rejected the notion of robot equality, but there was a great outcry against granting robot sentience. As a result, Lucius and his daughter Lucille found themselves alone and answerable to a species which just trusted them. However, he still managed to make friends, and this action allowed Lucius to hope that the future would turn out better for his kind. Lucius cultivated his patience, hoping to see the day when people would accept robots as their equals. The relationship of Caden and his rebels with the Empire could be described as contemptuous at times, but for the most part there was mutual respect and assistance. This disappeared when a much less agreeable captain was decided to stronghold, and he was going to use force to bring the rebels in line. Much blood was spilled, Colin lost a captain, and Caden hardened his stance against the Empire. Lola earned many prestigious awards for her first-hand coverage of the war on Stronghold, and this would spur on to a greater investigative work. Eventually, her very presence would scare corrupt officials, as they assumed she was there to unearth their dirty little secrets. Of course, this would put her in danger, but as a fox, she was more than capable of meeting these challenges. Queen Regina grew to have a love-hate relationship with Captain Nelson. While the captain performed their duties beyond compare, Regina was driven to pull her hair by some stunt or action the captain took and failed to mention. However, when it came time for her to step down, she knew she was leaving the Empire in the capable hands of her son, Gabriel Newerville. Not content to stay on Stronghold, Remy made sure to follow Alicia wherever she went, whether she wanted to or not. Some historians argue Remy was actually the greatest hero of that period of the Empire, since he often had to make up for the shortcomings of the humans around him. Those who disagreed were met with accusations of being cat haters. <sighs> it's a very weird game. So yes, that was... That was Planet Stronghold Colonial Defense, and... Yeah, it was pretty good for the most part. I, I enjoyed the battle system. It reminded me a lot of Seasons of the Wolf in the way that the most interesting bit and what what I would dub the meat of the game was actually in the side context. It was all the talking to your, your teammates stuff. But uh, no, I enjoyed it. I'll I'll, you know, I'll collate my thoughts and uh, write up a full review, uh, which you'll you'll see tonight when as to when this video is released. But yeah, until then. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in future series.